Hi friends, I'm Miss Courtney, and today we're going to talk about asking for what you want or need. And last week we learned how repeating directions can help us remember what we need to do. Let's check in with Josh and Sally and see what they're doing. Oh, I just need to finish the top part of my tree and I'll be done. Oh no, what am I going to do? What's wrong? There's no more green paint and I need it for my picture. I'll help you look. Hmm. They're looking for some paint. Hmm. I can't find any either. Let's ask a teacher for help. I don't know. I'm afraid to ask our teacher. It's okay to ask. You don't have to be scared. Teachers are here to help. Face the teacher and say in a strong, respectful voice, Excuse me, will you please help me find some green paint? I can try that. If I face the teacher and ask in a strong, respectful voice, let me say it to myself so I remember. Say it in a strong, respectful voice. Yes, Sally, do you have something to ask me? I'm painting a tree. Josh helped me look, but we can't find any green paint. Will you please help me find some? Yes, Sally, you asked in a calm, respectful voice, and that helped me know what you need. I will help you find some green paint in the cupboard. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for your help, Josh and Sally. We are going to learn a new verse to our song about listening to rules. We use the listening rules, we use the listening rules, this is how we all can learn, we use the listening rules, we focus our attention, we focus our attention, this is how we all can learn, we focus our attention, we use our self-talk too, we use our self-talk too. This is how we all can learn, we use our self-talk too. We say directions again, we say directions again. This is how we all can learn, we say directions again. We say what we need and want, we say what we need and want. This is how we all can learn, we say what we need and want. Thanks for singing with me. Now, I want to show you a picture. This is Gloria. The teacher said, it's time to get ready to go outside. Gloria got her coat. She put her arms in the sleeves. Yesterday, she was able to zip up her coat by herself. Today, she's trying to zip up the zipper. She tries and she tries, but she can't get it to work. Gloria is stuck. She needs help with her coat zipper. Who do you think Gloria can ask for help? Hmm. Oh, maybe a friend or maybe her teacher. Those are great ideas. What kind of a voice should Gloria use when she's asking for help? Oh, a, a kind and respectful voice. Yeah, a strong voice so that the teacher can hear. I'm gonna shoo my cat away. <laughs> Fell down. If you think Gloria should face the teacher when she asks for help, put your thumbs up. I think so. It's hard to hear your words if you're not facing your teacher. When you need to ask someone for help, look at the person and speak in a respectful voice. Asking in a respectful voice. 
will get you help more quickly than if you have your back turned or if you're not talking in a respectful voice. I have a story to share with you and it is called What Use is a Moose by Martin Waddle, illustrated by Arthur Robbins. Jack made friends with the moose and brought it home. He brought the moose back to his house. He made friends with the moose in the woods and brought it back to his house. What use is a moose? asked Jack's mom. I'm sure mooses have uses, said Jack. If you find a use for your moose, he can stay, said Jack's mom. Jack and his moose sat in the yard and thought. I could hang the wash on you to dry, moose. Jack suggested, so he hung the wash on the moose, but that was no use. The laundry did not really get dried hanging up on the moose's antlers, and he's eating it. Whoops. Can you drive, moose? You could be mom's chauffeur, Jack said to the moose, but... That was no use. Jack, or the moose, crashed into the gate. Maybe you could work in the garden, said Jack. But that was no use. Could you make mom her dinner, Jack asked the moose. But even that was no use. Your moose is wrecking our house, mom told Jack, and she got very angry. We've no use for a moose, she said. He'll have to go back to the woods. Jack was upset. So was the moose. You must be of some use, Jack told the moose. So the moose did his best to help around the house. Oh, he's trying to help wash the floor, but he spilled the bucket, got it stuck on his foot, and then it's on his head. Oh, and here he's turning on a vacuum. Hmm, I wonder what will happen next. Oh no, said mom. Not that way, cried mom. No, 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 cried mom. Oh no. The moose is wrecking the house with the vacuum. Oh no. But it was too late. Crash, crack. Crunch. You are a very bad moose, said mom, pulling Jack up from the floor. The moose shivered and quivered and shook. Get out of my house, mom told the moose. You're no use and I don't want you around. There goes the moose. The moose went away. Jack cried and cried for his moose. That moose was no use, said his mom, but I love my moose. Jack told mom. Mom thought a little, then she said, you're right, Jack. Being loved is a very good use for a moose. And she called the moose back. The moose stayed with Jack almost forever, but not in the house. It lived in a special moose shack out back, built by Jack and the moose. And it even has a spot for his big antlers to fit through in the doorway. And there's pictures of the moose trying to catch a fish. The end. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.